Former Vice President Joe Biden, does he have a vision and who should he pick for his form, for his vice president in order to fill his former role? All right, we are back with Democratic strategist and Obama administration alum Roger Fisk and Lauren Claffey, founder of Claffey Communications. She previously served as Deputy Assistant Secretary for Public Affairs at the Department of Homeland Security. Always great to have Good you both. Yeah, right. thanks. Roger, I wanted to pick up on a comment you were making about sort of next steps for Joe Biden. You said he needs to now go out and actually lay on a vision, which he really hasn't done to this point. It's just been basically the electability argument. Sure. I'm the one to beat Trump. I'm the one that beats Trump. It's been very effective sure. electorally. Now people need to know what he's actually going to stand for. What do you think that is? I, I was just thinking, I really genuinely don't know what the first hundred days of a potential Biden administration looks like. What are the priorities? What is he going to you know, put his political capital on the line to fight for? Do you have any sense or guesses of that? I mean, just stitching together the various proposals and then also factoring in a decent amount of just my own kind of assumptions about where he's coming from. A pr relatively traditional center left between the 40 yard lines kind of platform, right? Which is restore uh, the expansion of Medicaid, work with some of the governors to do that. It's been incredible. There's 460,000 people in Kentucky, for example, that have health care that didn't before. So kind of building on that, looking at the skill gap, there's basically six million jobs in this country that we're not producing students that match it skill-wise. So there's lots of real estate, which I'm really surprised that the current administration hasn't tried to wrap their arms around about marrying up our community colleges and our vocational schools and things like that so that we can look at that skill gap and educate Americans. So I don't think, I mean, it's just gonna be a relatively straightforward yeah, center left. Oh, and then restore our relationships with the world and pick up the torch of the Western right. Democratic. Like what I'm hearing is very much like Obama incrementalism, right, Lauren? And it's just well, at it's, least Obama at the beginning. I mean, you knew he was going to go hard for health care. Right. Mm -hmm. He went and pretty hard for right. cap and trade. Didn't work out. He yeah. went hard on banking. On Wall Street. Regulated. I mean, that also didn't All work out where I wanted. Right. But Remember, you, you yes. only had a Senate for six right. months. Right. Yeah. But you knew, like, you knew it was going to be health care. You knew there was going to be a deal to, to try to go after the banks. You knew there was going to be something on the environment. I really yeah, don't. Was, you were voting for something. You were yeah. voting for hope and change. This is very and much a very just strong like, platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Biden at this point, I feel like, has done nothing but just defend against past positions, right? Yeah. And that is going to be his biggest problem, is actually outlining a vision for the future while he's still getting attacked by all of the evolutions that he's had so far as a candidate. Yes. And so I think it's going to be really hard for him to have a consistent message, especially if Biden, I mean, if Bernie is still in the race with him, right? Because we're just ticking closer and closer to the general the longer that Bernie stays in, and he should, right? Like, for as mm -hmm. long as possible, as we've discussed. But the longer that he is in, the more attacks that Biden is taking, more water he's taking on. He doesn't have time to focus on his general election and, and the structure that he needs there. And he's got to do it point. by May. That's the thing yeah. is with Biden, though, is the only things he's evolved on are actually culturally far left positions. Like we were talking about guns and the Hyde Amendment, putting Beto in charge of gun policy. In terms of his economic policy, these are things which he's not evolved on whatsoever. He released his cabinet position could have been through the Obama administration. In some ways, it's more Wall Street friendly than the Obama administration, Roger. And so it's difficult because you're essentially saddling yourself with the Obama legacy for all the good that it has done you in the American South with voters, but also all the electoral baggage that Hillary Clinton had in 2016 vis-a-vis -vis Donald Trump. I think, and I yeah. understand the question, I yeah. think it's a, there's there's some hurdles in there. Yeah. One, he doesn't have the personal unpopularity that Secretary Clinton did. Totally. We covered that um, earlier in the show. Mm -hmm. Totally true. Two, yeah. I think he can go at um, some of, if you look at last night, there's about 12 counties in uh, Michigan that are the vaunted Obama-Trump yes. counties, and he won all of them. Mm -hmm. So I he think won every county in Michigan. Actually. He can. It, there you yeah. go. <laughs> uh, but I think he can go back to some of that coalition, free of, frankly, some of the racial baggage and mm -hmm. things like that that uh, the, that were heaped upon um, President Obama, um, where it was much easier to paint him as exotic and mm -hmm. international and all those other things. So I think within that, there's actually opportunities uh, to grow, keeping in mind your, your comment earlier about youth. Back on the, the point we just talked about, yeah. I think it's very important. He 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 does need to present a comprehensive vision, and but he has time to do it, and the appropriate time is coming up. Um, 
folks far smarter than me say that roughly the impression that people have of an election is baked in the cake in May. Yep. And then folks basically unplug and go to the beach for June, July, and August, and then they plug back in after Labor Day. But Labor Day is much more a turnout exercise than it is a persuasion exercise. Right. The persuasions largely happen in the spring. So coming up, with full respect to Senator Sanders, let that play out, but he's got to like lay that out so people have a firm sense of where his North Star is yeah. before they unplug for the summer. Yeah, yeah. it kind of goes back to your point, too. Like Biden really needs to ignore whatever Bernie is throwing at him and just focus on going ahead and laying out he that message. Well, and, he doesn't have really does yeah. 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 <laughs> And here's the thing is, have we not learned the lesson from the Hillary campaign? Because they decided, they made an affirmative choice, we are going to run this as basically like a morality person personality contest. We're going to accept that frame. Donald Trump is the show, and this election is going to be a referendum on Donald Trump. Biden is running that same playbook. I mean, without an affirmative vision, without focusing on here's what I would do, look, it worked in the Democratic primary. All people cared about was electability. He won that debate. But now, you have to do so much more than that because it's not going to be enough to say Donald Trump is bad. We all know who Donald Trump is, right? Democrats have spent, since he's been in office, the Democrats and the media have spent a lot of time edu trying to educate the American people about the problems with Donald Trump. And so far, his approval rating is pretty good. Went up yeah. after impeachment. You know, the economy has helped him. That may not be on the table anymore. But, Roger, it's not enough to just run against Donald Trump. I mean, I've said that all along, back even when we were discussing the Mueller report and things mm -hmm. like that, we were heading into the 2018 midterms. You, you have to start with a blank piece of paper and fill it out with your vision, where you want to bring the country, how you want to get there, block and tackle kind of some of the legislative steps, at least on our side. Yeah. Um, grievance and things like that works much better on Sagar's side. <laughs> um, but then, uh, but then also, you know, looking at um, you can you can anatomize it down to this level. Twenty eight thousand people voted in Detroit in twenty sixteen and didn't check a single box for president. Right. So the question is, is if those twenty eight thousand folks go back in, do they check that box? And if they do then Michigan's gone. I think Pennsylvania's already gone for the president. I think Florida and Ohio are with I'm him no matter so, what. I'm not sure about Pennsylvania. Yeah, well, and, and I Michigan think unemployment's I going up. I you look at those special elections, they've already done their redistricting. He's lost Roger, all the specials as I played a clip, as I played a clip here, would you sacrifice millions of blue collar jobs in favor of green regulation? Biden says yes. So, I mean, these are, you know, got some challenges. The, uh, the, the employment increase of, you, of, those jobs in, uh, of those jobs in Pennsylvania has only gone up. There's a lot, like I said, it, it is very difficult, and I think it makes it ba the basic margin as it is right now is very thin. Whereas I thought with Bernie, I thought that the whole map could have changed, and it really would have been a fundamentally different question. But, but also, I think yeah, when, you, when you mentioned that you yeah. take away those blue collar jobs, you, you're you're. Right. You're only saying half of that, right? Like, sure. But it doesn't most, matter, most right? of, like, It doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 We're going to have to go back. Coal miners out of work. Not, how, many, how many times do you hear that one? The, there's, yeah. a, like a, there's a company in yeah. Kentucky called Enerblue right now, yeah. which is a coal company. But they're at the same time training their workers to accommodate some of these new technologies because they're looking at their sure. own future and they don't want to be caught behind. Yeah. Coal is actually suffering under this president, believe it or not. Um, so look at the market. The market is is already making those adjustments. So I think had you, that had you read the, had you yeah. read the yeah. rest of the, the former vice and president's they, sentence, I he would go on to put, say, back to my skill gap. I know what saying, he was saying. We're I'm not just saying telling it's you gonna be But it's just convenient it's be when you say half of it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. Well, let me, I, I do want to get to this because I think it's interesting. And I know, Roger, you've already said, like, people don't vote on VP picks. But there is a little bit of a different dynamic here because the mm -hmm. assumption is whoever is Biden's VP is going to be the next Democratic nominee. Um, with that in mind, you know, who are some of the names that you think would make sense, would be electorally potentially beneficial, would be that people could see stepping into that role right away? I think you. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. I do not think uh, should, me, you so go ahead. Ahead. should you wish to serve? Should you wish to serve? No, if I, I was thinking about this last night on a different network. Yeah. Uh, if I were to guess right now, when you go all the way down, you know, to the end of the rainbow, I would say Val Demings hmm. of Florida, um, former police manager. chief. Uh, a wonderful kind of presentation, gravitas, uh, and obviously Florida female minority, like mm -hmm. all that other stuff. Um, I don't see him going with anyone that was in the field. 
Uh, I don't I don't know that like a Harris gets you something given that I think right. California would go the way it does that kind of stuff mm-hmm. um, But I don't know it'll be re- really what do you interesting think? to watch. Yeah. I still think it's gonna be Stacey Abrams Yeah, so I like I, sure. I think I it think probably so. ends. Right. I don't know if Stacey would do it That would because she said she would do well, yeah. not with Biden, but She said she would serve as vice I think yeah. she probably yeah. would do it because you do you see like getting that nod means you are the next Democratic nominee I'm not sure that he will go with Stacey only because I think that part of this person has to be ready on day one is so important. And, you know, someone who just lost a statewide yeah, race. I mean, as much as we all know her name, how much does America really know her name? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah I don't think a ton. And, I mean, if I am the Biden team, I'm not looking at this in a traditional sense because I think, you know, people delivering states yeah. because, you know, that type of stuff is kind yeah. of like old. And it also never works. Old yeah, it never works. Yeah, it doesn't really yeah. work. So throw that out, right? Like, it doesn't matter what state they're from. You really just need somebody who is camera ready, who can go out there and deliver your message, who can energize folks that you can't necessarily energize yourself, like an Andrew Yang, Mm -hmm. you know, like a young person, an AOC, not that Mm -hmm. they're going to be the ones, but you really need somebody somebody, like his biggest weakness is with young progressives. Yes. He needs to identify that person that can go out and energize young progressives that can speak to them, who can mm-hmm. they, who can say, I'm going to be in the room with Biden when we're talking about climate change, and I'll make sure progressives' views are represented there, and we'll come to a better place. Yeah. I mean, if I'm the Biden team, that's what I'm looking at. And if I'm advising them, that's what I'm saying. I'm like a Republican. I'm giving like, yeah, the, right. like the play. <laughs> no. like, it's yeah. ridiculous. But I mean, that's what I would be looking at, because I do think like all, he's already has the African-American vote locked up. Right, exactly. Like, I mean, they are overwhelmingly supporting him already because of his um, view, not only his viewpoints, but also his affiliation with Barack Obama. He doesn't necessarily need an African-American to come in and help him shore up support right. there. I also, think he would need. Yeah. we've also seen that's not how yeah, African-Americans actually vote. vote. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I mean, yeah. he is an old white guy, and he right. dominated with African-Americans. Yeah. So that's not By exactly 80%. how that works. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of amazing. <laughs> All right, guys. What a country. Thank, Thank you guys. so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Tomorrow on Rising, we're going to continue continue our talk about the generational divide between establishment and progressive Dems. What about the generational divide among populists? We're going to get into that tomorrow. All right, Ken Klippacini is going to take us inside the failed Bloomberg campaign. I can't wait to hear that Love one. Thank Ken. you so much for joining us today. As always, please make sure you like, share, subscribe right here. We'll see you guys tomorrow.